Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today, this is a tutorial talking about the start of this energy attack effect. Uh, mainly as a practical example of delay fall I've discussed in the past. In this tutorial, I'm going to use 5.0, but you should be able to follow it using 4.5. Uh, presets used to follow this tutorial are free from the link in the description. The tutorial file will be free to monthly subscribers, as being said earlier. This tutorial file is also bundled with the complete animation file on sale. More information is in the description. Note that the entire animation is a composition of multiple effects. For example, we have a sign function to fluctuate the size of a sphere. We have the lightning effect that discussed in the past. We have delay for, for basic particles. We have a stylized tornado effect. One, two, three. Each of them can be an individual tutorial. That's why I didn't discuss this animation as a whole, because I've discussed them individually in their own separate tutorials already, and it's time consuming to discuss them as a whole only because I've changed some colors and settings. Today, this is essentially a repeat of the fiery Fisher effects tutorial I talked about in the past. And I'm using this concept also in this animation and this animation. These are all variations of the same concept utilizing the knowledge from a single tutorial. In the future, while I will focus on stylized effects, I will minimize this kind of instance of repetition. Either I will share the file or sell the file unless it's interesting enough to isolate and discuss again. Let's start with a simple plane so you can see the basic concepts in the shader workspace. I'm going to add a material and a call for the UV map attribute. This is basically the same as the UV map in texture coordinates, but it's always a good practice to use this attribute method due to various reasons. Let's map a noise texture to this UV map and use a color ramp to increase the contrast. We only need to show the white part, so let's feed it into emissive alpha BSDF and feed our black and white to the alpha channel. And we have this very noisy alpha because of the current EV render. You need to hit N to enable the panel and in option, change this ring to blended mode. You can enable this transparency overlap. Sometimes it causes the issue, other times not. So you have to decide yourself accordingly. In this case, I will just leave it on. Here, it's important to note that UV map goes from 0, 0 to 1, 1. If we go to edit mode and elongate this plane, the texture mapping will be stretched accordingly. We're going to animate this texture by manipulating its coordinates. You can use vector mass multiply to change the dimension. Scaling up the coordinate will shrink it. Scaling down will stretch it. You can use vector mass add to offset. By adding or subtracting on axis, you are moving in either direction. It's important to note you can also offset before this dimension multiplier. If you do it before, it's a relative offset affected by this multiplier. Adding it later, it's an absolute offset independent from this multiplier. Either of them will work. You need to choose the form which fits your needs. Here, I'm going to offset on relative with combine XYZ and the time info node to drive this texture continuously. Here, you notice this time info is driving the texture to the left. If we enable negative, then it's running to the right. So we finished the basic setup of this animation. Then we need to do a transition to start and stop of our animation. Basically, we need several masks along this UV. Let's separate this UV and looking on the x-axis, we have a mask going from left to the right. Similarly, on the y-axis as well, just in a different direction. We are remapping it and using a color ramp to be 0, 1, 1, 0. I'm going to duplicate one for y-axis and I need to duplicate another one for the transition. 
this mask from the color ramp is basically working in the range between 0 to 1. And uh, if we add a value to the x-axis, immediately you can see we are moving this white mask either to the left or the right for appearing and disappearing. Thus, we will do transition with two math nodes, and we use a mix node for better control. Going from 1 to 0, we have appearing. I add an attribute A for later usage. Going from 0 to negative 1, we have disappearing. I name it with an attribute D. Once we have this mask, we need to multiply these masks with our existing textures on the alpha channel. So I multiply once, multiply twice, multiply three times. You can see some parts of textures are faded out close to the edge because of our masks. This is basically how we set up the shader. The rest are mostly parameters. For example, we need a color. Let's add, uh, let's give it a blue hue. Let's add some details and frequency to our noise textures. Parameters are always time consuming, so you would have to spend the time to tweak yourself. Before we leave the shader, let's plug this attribute A and D to the mix. It's normal that our shader disappears because we didn't have these two attributes set up yet. Up to now, we are working on the texture of a single plane. And then imagine we have more planes and each of them has different parameters. Then we will have a complex animation. This is why we need geometry nodes or whatever method for you to generate planes and store these attributes to shader. Therefore, let's go to the Geometry Nodes editor. Let's add a node tree to our plane. I'm going to delete the group input and start with a curve line and the point instance geometry. We need a random rotation to distinguish our instanced curves. There's a built-in random rotation provided by Blender Foundation in 5.0, but it seems to work for all axes, which is not what I want. So I'm going to use my own random rotation preset, which has a the only option to restrict axis. If you want, you can also turn on the extra XY rotation a bit to make them tilted from the ground. Next step, let's do a bevel curve, which turns the curve to a tube. But we need planes, so we use this flat mode Let's store UV map and plug in UV and set material to one we just made. Right now, we won't see anything from our material because we need to set attributes A and D. For convenience, I'm going to store them on the instance domain. I store an A, I store a D. By playing the value, you won't see any change because we need to realize the instance. Now you can see when we manipulate A and D, we will have this transition effect. But it's a bit different from my plan. Right now it's going outwards, but I need to make it inwards. Of course, we can just switch the definition of these two attributes. Or another way to do it is to reverse the curves so we reverse the UV map for them to go inwards. Now we have the basic setup of parameters. It's time to use the lay ball. Let's firstly clear these input values. So we start clean from nothing and then plug the lay ball into A. If you play the animation, it's not immediately obvious about the delay. You can crank up the step interval value to make it more obvious. Now you see they appear one by one. You can also change the duration to slow down their appearing. You can add the index randomize. Remember to change it to instance mode. And then 
by playing with the seed, you change the order of appearing and so on. Now we finished appearing, we can add another delay for for disappearing. For simplicity of this demo, I set the count to one and duplicate the delay for. I'm going to use the offset the time to drive this second delay. So these two fourths will happen. So these two fourths will happen in sequence. Let's shorten the let's shorten the duration and see how these two factors play out. You see, right after it appears, the texture disappears. To increase the duration of the interval between these two sequential animations, you can add some values to this delay time. This means after the first delay for finishes appearing animation, you will wait some additional frames until the second delay for to start disappearing animation. This is the basics of the entire animation. The rest are parameter controls or polishments. The first the prominent issue you may notice is the repetition of the texture. Because they are using the exact same coordinates as the UV map, therefore we need some offsets. Let's duplicate the, the store attribute. It should be a vector, and we and I will name it to W. I will use randomness, set it to absolute variance mode, and crank up the variance to values like 555. Then go to the shader editor look for the coordinates driving our noise texture. We have left an absolute offset previously, so we can use it right away. So we duplicate this attribute node and set it to W and plug it in. Immediately you will see textures are different and the repetition is basically gone. We will do similar randomness for the scale and you can change the value to lengthen or shorten our curves. Next, I'm going to change some thickness in the bevel curve scale. If I input the spline parameter, it goes from 0 to 1 from start to the end of our curve. Here, let's reverse this relationship. Here, let's reverse this relationship in remap. And thus, if I increase the maximum, I have a thicker end. You can also crank up a little bit about minimum. Now if I isolate a single element, you can see the plane is thick at the end and the thing at the start like a triangle. As a kind of a final polishing, you may want to bend these curves. There are two ways of bending. In the past, I was using vector rotate a lot. This particular time, I want to use a new preset called Bend Deformer. It can work for a single geometry or instances. Let me firstly show you how it works on a single one. For simplicity, I will just tell you it works on X, Y plane and on Z axis for this specific bending. Here, you see it bends from the middle. So I need to offset on the X axis to zero. And by increasing angle, you see there's a bending event. If you disable view, you see how the final image looks. But this only works on a single curve without a real variation. Therefore, another option is to bend on instances. We need to put it before the realized instance and set it to instance mode. Here we can use a randomness node again, and you can play around with the parameter to increase variations so that some are bent more, others like straight lines or whatever. Just to try to play with these values. Finally, just play around with parameters, shorten the step interval, change the seed. If you want to render it, make sure you have the bloom in your compositor. And in the render setting, you can turn on the viewport compositor, crank up the emission value in the shader, change the color ramp. Sometimes, change color management to standard so that you have more saturation or whatever. You can use the hue saturation node. The principle is the same as what we did for the noise texture. So I'm going to duplicate and name a new attribute called W2. 
And in geometry nodes, let's store a float value using neg. Let's store a float value using negative and plug the negative into the random value. Let's set the average to 0 0.5 and crank up the original value for deviation. You see how it becomes much cooler. So there are many possibilities of tweaking, so many that it will be time consuming to discuss each. And thus, it's the end of this tutorial. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.